Hi, I'm David Coffey, Jackson County Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. Uh, today, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, uh, setting up your cows for artificial insemination and the kind of things you're going to need, the protocols, that kind of thing. So first, I want to talk a little bit about the tools that you're going to need. Um, one thing is I've got a glove on my hand that's, that's important for handling cedars and, and anything to do with this artificial breeding. Um, there are hormones and stuff involved, so it's a good idea to wear gloves. Um, this is a cedar applicator device. Um, what you do with it is, is, you, is how you insert your cedars. So your cedar is this T-shaped device. You're gonna fold the wings up on it and put it in here, just like this. And then we're gonna coat that with some kind of lube and uh, insert that into the cow. So uh, another item is a syringe of some kind. I like the repeating syringes myself because they're just easier to use. You can work several head with them. You know, you set it on however much you want to give each cow dose. You know, it makes it real simple. But I have to have some kind of needles uh, for these intramuscular injections. For uh, AI protocols, it's better to have inch or, or bigger than an inch. Paper towels are always good to have around. Um, these are uh, palpation gloves. They're a full, full arm length, you know. Got to have those for, for the breeding part of it. Um, I like to have a little bit of lube just to put on your hands to, to do the breeding part. We got um, some tweezers here that are made to, especially to get the straws out of the semen tank. Got some scissors or they make actual straw cutters that you just hold your straw and snip the end of it off with to do your breeding part. You need a water thaw of some kind. You can use a thermos with, with uh, warm water, but it has to be a certain temperature. Um, some kind of gauge like this to tell you uh, what temperature is, is the right temperature. And uh, this also has the lights on it that tells you that it's the right temperature, but I usually double check that. This is a breeding gun. We uh, pull the plunger back, insert the straw in the end, and these are sheaths right here. Make sure your, your blue end goes on first so it can be pushed to the end. You shove the little blue piece all the way to the end. And there's a catch right here that holds it on. And that way it's good and secure. That's after the straw is put in there and cut off. So then that's how, that's what we used to breed after that. So this is about everything that you need besides cows <laughs> to breed with. You also need uh, your semen tank, which I don't have here. But, uh, but when, you, when we go to breed and uh, other videos, we will have a semen tank there. So here we have a reproductive track out of a, uh, out of a slaughtered cow. Um, just want to talk about the parts that, uh, of this track as it pertains to a farmer uh, breeding their cow. Um, so, so this one is missing the vulva, but um, you know, where, the part that you actually see on the cow. But then you have the vagina, and in this area is the cervix. That's the most important part for breeding. And, it, and they always told me in AI school, it, it feels like a turkey neck. It kind of does, I guess. Um, and then past that, you have the uterus, and then you got the uterine horns and the ovaries. But um, the most important parts for, for, a, uh, for a farmer that's going to be breeding his cows or, or having somebody breed your cows to know is that the cervix is here, and that's where you pass the rod through into the uterus, just, just slightly into the uterus. Once you get that freed up rod, we'll show you here in a second, um, into the uterus, um, that is where the semen is deposited. So that's the parts that you kind of need to know. This is what it looks like if you could see inside the cow. Uh, it would look, uh, most would look similar to this. So from a standpoint of putting a cedar in on a, on a track like this, um, this one would be a little bit more difficult to show you than if we had the full track with the vulva and everything. But here we have, um, you know, you, you would enter the vulva back here. It's gonna go through the vaginal canal and then you're gonna feel it stop in there. You know, I, I can't really press any further than that. It's hitting the cervix. So you're gonna release that cedar in there and see those wings there fold out and that's what holds that in. So then, you know, once the seven day protocol's up or five day, depending on whether you're doing heifers or cows, you're just gonna go back, grab hold of that string and pull it out. Uh, today, we're setting up some cows for some artificial insemination. Um, 
we wanted to show you how that we go through the process of the protocol, to set them up to get them ready for artificial insemination, what we do. Um, so what we do is, is we take a shot of GNRH, two cc's, which uh, essentially uh, is a luteinizing hormone. It uh, causes them to uh, to get ready to breed kind of thing, get them in the mood. Um, so we're gonna give them a shot of, of GNRH today and we're gonna put a cedar in. So I'll show you how we put a cedar in. This is a cedar applicator device. And this is cedar. It's coated in progesterone. So what we're gonna do with this is fold the wings up on it. We're gonna put it in the applicator device. Put a little bit of lubrication on it. Tail to the side, uh, at an upward angle at the vulva. You'll go up and you'll feel a little ridge go over and then straight in and you'll feel it stop at the cervix. I'm gonna release it with the handle and then you leave that blue uh, string there to pull it out. So in seven days, we'll come back and pull that cedar out and uh, that'll be the next part of the video. We're also gonna give the shot of GNRH. It is an intermuscular shot. Get yeah. it. in seven days we're gonna pull the cedar out give another shot and then we're gonna actually put a heat patch on and watch heat after that but the majority of them will come in within 66 hours after that so stay tuned for our next video Seven days since we put our cedars in. Uh, as you can see, they're still in there. It's what we want. Uh, we're coming back. Um, uh, pull these cedars. So it's pretty simple. You just got the little blue string there. Just wrap your finger around it, kind of. Pull it out of there. Simple enough. All right. And then we're going to give a shot of Lutalize. So, to what to watch for when giving Lutalize is there's two different kinds. You got a Lutalize. It just says little ice injection. This is a 5cc intermuscular. You also have a little ice high con, which is a 2cc uh, that can be intermuscular or subcutaneous. So for intermuscular, we want a uh, needle that's longer than an inch. We're gonna get that in the, in the neck, just like we do on the others. Get her to cooperate with us here. And she's done. So, actually, the other thing we're going to do 
I forgot is put a heat patch on. Kind of like a lottery ticket. I got a silver film on them and when that gets scratched off they'll be this color underneath that whole patch will be that color when they when they show heat and when they ride <clears throat> so um we'll know when they're in heat that way if we got these on there so they're real good and sticky we're gonna put that right above their tail head there now what what we're really trying to do is we're trying to figure out when they're in standing heat. So those other cows will ride, and when she stands still enough to let them ride, this is gonna get rubbed off because them big heavy cows are rubbing on that's gonna rub it off. When we come back and see that these are solid pink, we know that she's ready to breed. Sometimes that cedar will be, be hidden there pretty good from all the manure and everything. So now, I give the last shot was the 5cc intermuscular. So I, I've got a, uh, a 5 8 inch needle here, a little short needle, and we're going to do this high con. I'll show you how to do a, a subcutaneous injection. So when you do a subcutaneous injection, you can't really do it where you can see it. You pull up the skin and go right into that. Make like a tent with the skin and go right into that tent. Now that's called the two-hand method that I just did there. We'll show you the one-handed method. In the next one. Put her heat patch on. Make sure they're good, good and stuck. Sometimes if they got real long hair, you, it works better to shave that. Yeah, if the hair's real long, it's better off to shave that hair off. That way it'll stay better. Okay, so <clears throat> this is going to be the, the one-handed tent method. You just take one hand and you go at an angle. Real simple. Do that one again. actual work goes today is the easiest day for the artificial insemination setup I mean, we want to hope that these don't come off I've actually never used this brand before so I'm gonna show you the one hand tent method again you go at an angle you, you let the end of the, of the needle catch the skin and it's gonna go right under the skin Give that shot. She didn't like it much, but somebody did. Yeah.
according to BQA um, guidelines, we recommend doing a subcutaneous injection when possible. So I kind of like this high concentrate <clears throat> glue line. That way you can do subcutaneous injection instead of intermuscular. Once we pull these cedars, we give them a shot of lutelice. For full grown cows like this on a seven day protocol, they're supposed to sh come into heat around 66 hours. So <clears throat> it is 2.30 in the evening on Monday. So on Thursday morning at 8 a.m., we should be back up here. They should be ready to breed around that time. Now that can be, that is the average. So. What we're looking for is by putting these heat patches on, we may have one come in early. We may come up here and breed her Wednesday night. You know, we may have one that comes in a little later. We may breed it uh, Thursday evening. So that's the reason we use the heat patches. You, the actual time protocol for just breeding would be to come at, you know, 8.30 in the morning on Thursday and breed all five. But where we're using the heat patches, we're going to breed them off the heat using the same protocol. So, um, the next part of our video will be the AI, the actual AI portion of the breeding, and uh, and we're going to be doing that on Thursday morning. Now on this uh, reproductive track that we have here, I'm gonna demonstrate how that you pass a rod to do the actual breeding part of artificial insemination. So um, actually you're gonna have a, a tank when you're out in the field breeding cows. You're gonna have a tank, you're gonna pull a straw out. You're gonna thaw that straw in, in a water bath such as this one. Once it's thawed, you're gonna dry it very well and you're gonna put the straw into the end of the gun. You're gonna snip the end of it and then you're gonna put your sheath onto the gun, all right? Now, this, this in, in the field, when we're actually breeding cows, we wanna keep this warm because the cold will actually kill semen. Uh, temperature fluctuations will kill semen. So it's best to keep this warm or to, you know, put it in as soon as possible. Okay, so once we uh, actually start to breed, we're gonna palpate the cow with her left hand <clears throat> and you're gonna find the cervix which is gonna be in this area. That's not, it's a lot easier to do on this table than it is in a cow, but you're just kind of gonna sweep through there, find, find the cervix, it's got that feeling to it. Okay, and I can tell that right here's the, the end of the cervix. So I'm gonna grab that cervix, I kind of hold it in my hand like that. I work the rod in to the cervix. And then once we enter into the cervix, you got some rings in there that are kind of, they're like these little fold type things. that you have to work the rod through. It takes a few minutes sometimes. Sometimes it slips right through. Okay. So right there, I've passed all the way through the cervix. You can actually see the rod hitting the uterus up here. Did you see that? So, but see, we can't really see it or feel it here in the middle. So right at the end of that cervix, where that rod is just barely starting to make an appearance, you kind of want to feel that with your hand. You'll feel that rod tipping, tipping your finger there just past the cervix. And that's actually where we want to deposit the semen at. It's just outside that cervix. So, and then once you once you do that, she's hopefully bred. You know, two hundred eighty-three days later, you'll have a calf. But uh, but that is the process for passing the rod through the cervix on on a um, on a track that's out. 
It's the same as, as doing one in, but we'll, we'll also demonstrate that in another part of the video. So an another thing that I wanted to show about these uh, about these tracks, and, and we tell everybody, um, you know, when they're trying to learn this, and, and when they tell you in AI school is when you're trying to pass a rod, um, that the end of that cervix is actually, it's kind of rounded out. So I wanted to show that a little bit. So I, I've, I've cut back the vaginal canal here, and you can see that the end of the cervix is, is right there. And see how that kind of rounds outward to the hole and see that the hole that you put the rod through is actually in the center of that. See that? And that's what I was talking about working those, working through those folds um, in the cervix is, is actually inside there. So when you, when you, as if you can see back in there, when, when that rod comes to that, it's very easy to go to the side of that and get that rod in stuck down there instead of being up in the hole like it needs to be. So, so this is where a lot of people struggle when they're, when they're breeding, um, artificially breeding for their first time, you know, is that you have to find the center of that cervix when you get back there like that. Hello everyone. Uh, we're back here today with our cows that we set up for AI. It is uh, Wednesday evening. So like I said, on our protocol, most of the time, uh, they're going to be about 66 hours, but we've got one that's coming in early here. So uh, as you can see, her patch is good and pink, good and rubbed. She is, has been in standing heat. So we're going to go ahead and breed her. So we're going to start by getting this straw semen out. Okay, uh, grab it. It's the last one in this canister. I'm going to drop the canister back down there and we're going to put it straight into this water, okay? So that's this water is right at about 98, 96 to 98 degrees. Okay. We're going to let that sit for at least a minute. We'll be getting a few of our other things ready while we're doing that. Get our breeding gun out. Glove. Also, we got some lube and some scissors sitting here close by. Okay. Also, paper towels is a good idea to have. So when you get your gun ready, you're gonna to wanna to pull your plunger back about the length of the straw. And the most important thing with semen is not to let it get cold. <clears throat> so we're out here, it's about 35 degrees. It's been raining a little bit. So uh, it's a, it, it can cool off quick. So we're gonna to wanna to try to keep it as warm as possible. So I usually take the gun, put it under my arm while I'm getting ready, that keeps it warm. All right, we're gonna to wanna to pull this straw out of here. I'll flip the water out of it as good as possible. I'm gonna try to wrap it up in this paper towel, keep it warm and keep it dry. Gotta get it as dry as possible because semen, semen can get killed, will die in water, okay? All right, once we get it good and dried off, we're gonna put it in our gun with the, with the pinch tip up. We'll take our scissors, cut the end, square off, Then we're going to take a sheath, put over our gun. Blue end goes down to the, to the gun. Push it all the way up. And I usually put it right here in the front of my pants until I get ready. Okay? That keeps it warm. I'll put our palpation glove on. Make sure and take it up as high as you can there. Put some lube on her hand, left hand. Gonna take the paper towel that you. Gonna take the paper towel that you dried your straw off with, 
I'm gonna try to clean her up best we can. Okay, I'm gonna put the tail to the left. I'm gonna palpate her directly. Find her surface. Okay, I'm gonna do a sweeping motion from left to right. Find the cervix. I'm gonna enter in the vulva at an upward angle and then go straight in to where we're at on our surface. She's not going to like that too much. Okay. Once we find the back of the surface, we work our way through it. Go through the pass through those angular rings. They're kind of like little notches in there. Kind of work your way through it. Uh, manipulating the cervix with your left hand. We're not really doing much with the rod. We're actually bringing the cervix over the rod. Okay? So we just pass through the cervix. Through the cervix. There. See how much how freely it's moving. How freely the rod's moving there. Okay. Should move a little bit. Hold on. Okay. Get her plunger up there ready. Oh, she's moved it. Hold on. Just trying to push push it out. That's okay. Our cervix is pretty long. All right, so see how we're moving freely again there? Okay. Oh, she won't move. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna deposit that semen just on the other side of the cervix, like we talked about in the other part of the video. Okay. And she's hopefully bred. We're looking for 283 days from now. We're going to want to uh, hopefully get a little calf out of that, a little Angus calf. And uh, so uh, another tip that I have is when you're breeding, you pull your sheath off and then you pull your glove down over your sheath like that. And you got yourself a trash bag. So that's, that's all about all there is to it. We bred her. We got um, four more here that will hopefully be in heat in the morning or we'll come in the heat this evening and we'll do, we'll breed them in the morning and uh, that'll be it. We'll continue tomorrow. So we're back this morning, working on breeding these cows again. Turned out to be a good cold morning for us. A little snow in there, and about 31 or two degrees. Now, something I didn't really mention yesterday is when I go in these cows, I kind of do a, a sweeping motion from left to right to find the cervix.
I go in with the with the breeding rod, I'm kind of looking for at the end of that cervix. There's a gritty, there's a gritty kind of you know, feeling that you get when the rod touches that hits that cervix, or when it hits the opening of the cervix. Every every cervix that you get into will be different. They'll feel different. The rod will go through differently. It's just they they all are kind of different. Some some are a little deeper in than others. Once we get that rod through there, we just go ahead and deposit the semen. Now, if you'll notice on this cow, her heat patch is not rubbed, and you're probably saying, "Well, why are you breeding her for heat patch ain't rubbed?" She should have came into heat by now, but since she hasn't, we've given her a shot of GNRH and we'll go ahead and breed her anyway. I'm gonna leave this heat patch on to see if she comes back into heat on the next cycle. If she does, it's possible that we could have put, you know, the cedar in at, at a point in her cycle to where it didn't make her come into heat. So if that's the case, we'll leave this heat patch on, see if the producer sees her come into heat a little bit later, and then we'll just go ahead and breed her again whenever that happens, if it happens. So this cow here also, her heat patch also isn't, isn't rubbed, so we will give her a shot too, do the same thing, leave the heat patch on, see if she comes in the heat on the next cycle. This concludes our artificial insemination series. For more information, please contact the Jackson County Extension Service. Thanks for watching.